Hey everyone, how are you all doing today? So, I'm here to give you a review of the K-drama The Inheritors or Hairs, episode 5 and 6. And today I'm basically gonna talk about the characters, try to dissect one or two characters, and show the relationship between Boys Over Flowers and Hairs and Gossip Girl and Hairs. And also tell you my favorite scenes and my least favorite scenes just so you know this might be slightly long but I'll try to shorten it as much as possible and I hope you have fun along with me so let's do this all right so first of all let's talk about a relationship like between gossip girl and heads and then boys over flowers and heads and then we can go into other things number one for anyone who watches Gossip Girl, Gossip Girl has this trio for characters in it. There's someone called Chuck Bass who has a dad that treats him badly. Like Chuck Bass's dad doesn't really care about Chuck Bass except he should get serious with his life and stuff like that and stuff like that. And Chuck Bass's dad is engaged to Serena's mom. Also, Serena's mom is in love with Dan Humphreys. Um, father and Dan Humphrey's father and Dan Humphrey's family as a whole are like poor they're not rich so basically one of the reasons why why Serena's mom and Dan Humphrey's dad never like came together till maybe later was because of like the social status stuff and ETC and ETC and ETC so now coming back to Hez, we see something like that in Hez in that Chan Young's dad loves Rachel's mom and Rachel's mom obviously loves him back and we see that because in episode 5 I believe there was a key, a scene where they both sneaked out on like their date, not dates because they were guys but yeah they sneaked out on like the people they were eating with and went to go kiss so we know that obviously there's something going on between them and they love each other. And we also know that because after the whole chasing thing, the mom, like, was waiting for his call. And I think they're cute, but yeah. So we see the whole Trump Bass dad, Dan Humphrey, and all that there. And we also see that Rachel's mom is engaged to Choi Young Do's dad. And from what we've seen so far, Choi Young Do's dad is, like, kind of a jerk who beats his child and he expect so much from Choi Young Do and Choi Young Do is now a jack as a result of that and I'm sure other things but yeah having a dad like that you might go crazy but yeah um so Choi Young Do is a bully a total jack and a total jack <laughs> a total jack and a total jack yes you got that right so we see that relationship between Gossip Girl and this drama and also obviously the richness how they're so rich in the, like gossip girl and there's also so rich in hairs now let's talk about the relationship between hairs and boys over flowers well you see in boys over flowers they were there were like hierarchies in the school and also we see situations whereby the very very rich kids like f4 will bully students not personally but they like make other people bully students for them and like when they bully the students like when the students are bullied hold on i'm just gonna do something right here when the students are bullied they tend to like all the other students in the school tend to like keep off of them they don't talk to them they don't want to have anything to do with them and we saw that in hairs when chayong do was like beating like bullying the kid that says i think his dad or his mom or his parents are also like low class like patching his parents and no one was like helping out they were just watching the whole thing so that kind of reminded me of boys over flowers but there was a difference in that in boys over flowers Lee Min Ho and the f4 crew never like physically harmed people like with their hands like they never like did the bullying themselves but in this drama, Choi Young Do was doing the bullying by himself, and we find out that Lee Min Ho was also once a real bully. Actually, he was the one that started the bullying in the school. 
which like there's so much contrast i wonder why he was ever a bully because he's like an innocent angel right now and i'm like dude you were ever a bully how is that possible what made you ever bully people so that's a story i'd also like to know Something else that I found really interesting that was like along the lines of like Boys Over Flowers was the dad. Okay, you remember how in Boys Over Flowers the mom was a witch? Yes, I just called her a witch. <laughs> Chairwoman was so evil. She was evil. No, it's like this evil. Anyway, yeah. Um. So um, the dad. All right, in this episode five i believe or six we see how like the dad got his pa or pi or whatever to investigate on his son's relationship and he found out that two of his sons wanted to date normal girls and he's like oh my goodness he's been a bad father i'm like oh my goodness this is gonna be the evil in-law or the evil parent in k dramas because every k drama has to have an evil mother-in-law or father-in-law or somebody-in-law and apparently i feel it's gonna be the dad this time and so suddenly the dad says oh i want to give in song a scholarship to jay cook high school and i'm like oh he may not be that bad he actually wants to help her only for us to find out that he just wants to send her to that school so she realizes that Lee Miho is not in her class and she should never ever dream of being with someone like Lee Miho. I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy's such a jerk. This father is such a jerk. But yeah, um, so um, the similarity between that and Boys Silver Flowers is that there's also like the evil mom who wants to separate them. And in Boys Silver Flowers, the mom, the chairwoman gave gum jen d a scholarship to the school shinwa high school and in this version too it was the dad that gave passion hey a scholarship to shinwa no <laughs> to jacob high school um that's one similarity then another thing that i found really interesting was when Kim Tan came back to school and all the students were like rushing out to go see him and who is Kim Tan because they've had so much about him and the ones who knew him wanted to see him again and so like it just reminded me of Boys Over Flowers the scene where F4 like comes in and the whole school like rushes out to meet them and I was just expecting them to just start singing almost paradise yeah but they didn't do that obviously <laughs> but i was really expecting that I'm like oh okay it's time for some almost paradise but yeah that's reminded me of boys over flowers so much that was really cool though that scene i'm going to that scene so so i really liked that those are some similarities that i found now we're going to talk about crystal who plays bona as a character well number one Oh my goodness, who freaking had Crystal's English? Her English is sweet. I think her English is even better than mine. Like, okay, her accent is like, she's like, so, 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 oh my God, it's so hot. Or something like that. She, I'm like, oh, yo, I think you just disgraced me. Like, I think I know English, but your English is so on point. <laughs> but yeah, her English is like so good though. I had to like pause for a second and ask someone like, did she say that or did someone else say that for her? It was that good though. And it's not really like common to see someone that has good English accent and a K-drama. It's not usual like they try but yeah. So it was really really good to see someone that was so good and she's a K-pop idol too. So I really want to give her props for that and her acting too. So far she hasn't let me down for an idol because if you guys have been keeping up with idol dramas they're good but the acting needs improvement but hasn't actually not let me down at all. It's actually been on point so kudos to you girl keep doing what you're doing. I love it so far. I love how annoyingly cute you are. So I love, I would love to see more from you. Also, there's something really interesting that I've been wondering about her. Did anyone notice that amongst the characters, she's one of them that like has so much like friends and like connections and all that and all that. But she's the most insecure of them. Like she has a loving boyfriend. She has like Kim. Young Do and Myung Soo, I think it's called, and Kim Hanyu, like she has people, but yet 
she's insecure which makes you wonder like what's her backstory is it because like believe me home i have cheated on her that she's so insecure or like uh, her parents cheating on each other because we don't know the story of her parents we just know like what they are or like the stock they own or like her father owning an entertainment company but we don't really know her story which makes you wonder like what's her behind what's the backstory of crystal i'd really like to know so we can maybe understand her character a little bit more why she's so like um insecure and so attached and so is he naggy what's the word for it when you're like holding on someone like no one is let go yeah you know what i'm talking about though i would really like to know why she's so like that but there must be a reason for it and i guess that's something we'll find out as the drama progresses so that's something really interesting that i really like to see as it goes how it works out also, I found it really interesting that Kim Yeon Do knows about like um, Kim Tan's mom, and I would really like to know like what happened, how he found out about that, and what went wrong. Is it just because his mom is not the real mom that he's angry at Kim Tan, or is he angry at Kim Tan because he's like, dude, I was always your shadow, only to find out that your mom isn't even your mom. So I'd really like to know the story between those people. Now moving on from all that to my favorite scenes and my least favorite scenes to my five favorite scenes or more than five possibly. My number one favorite scene was when Lee Min Ho came to Yun Sung's school in the car and all the girls were looking at him and he's like, oh, pass me that girl with the good lever. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yes, I am fangirling right now over Lee Min Ho because yes, Lee Min Ho is like my favorite Korean ever. Um, so um, he came and he was like, "Oh, pass that over that girl," and he, she was like, "What are you doing here?" and stuff. And that was just really cute. The whole interaction in that scene. And then she started watching it, and he, I thought it was really funny when he told her, like, oh, enter the car, get in, and she just, like, walked away from him, like, deuces! <laughs> and that was, like, really cute. And he kept telling her, stop right there, stop right there. And, you know, in a normal Korean drama, when a guy says stop right there, they, like, stop, like, boom, like, like, like they're robots or something, but she didn't stop, she just, like, and she kept on working and that was like really cool though and he was speechless and I said that's really cool and then he posted something on Facebook like his picture and he was like so cute about him like um being so cute and lovable and stuff and so Insan saw it and she found out that he was in her restaurant and they went to talk and Hence comes my second favorite scene. It was like a reverse. You know how when he went to the school, she walked away from him. This time, he was the one who walked away from her. And she was telling him, stop, stop. And he didn't stop. That was just so cute. I'm like, oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. But that was really cool, though. My third favorite scene was when he came like when he was at home and she was using her touch lights like to walk to go get wine i think from the cellar and it was dark so he was behind like watching her which is kind of fantastic but yeah he was watching her and then he turned on the lights for her and that was so cute it brought back memories of boys of flowers though when he took kim jen d to the ice skating ring and like put all the like fireworks for her so that was like really cute though and stuff so i was like oh, totally fangirling over it i thought that was like the cutest thing ever and next my fourth favorite scene was when they were together in the cellar but she didn't know that he was with her and he was hiding like behind her and he knew she cried i'm like oh my goodness this this two are just too cute like we get like so many cuteness overload from them and i just want to say thank you to the writer for giving them so many scenes together ah! but um my fifth favorite scene was when he didn't want to come to school like i think it was funny because when his mom told him like oh this is your uniform you need to start going to school he wasn't like you could see he wasn't interested until the mom said oh insang is 
um, transfer that he got interested and he's like oh yeah I'm gonna go to side school now because of insect that was really cool though and my next favorite scene was when he came to the school and he was being Kim Tan himself and um, he was like being a jerk obviously to Chan Young and then him and Kim Woo Bin finally met that's Cho Young though and he was like um I missed you Shingo and then um Kim Woo Bin was like Osara and then <laughs> it, was so just, it was just so cute <laughs> I was like literally freaking out and then there comes In Sung with her two little feet and then she stays in the middle and she's lost like all over her phone and she's like um okay <laughs> what have I got myself into and that was like so cool because it was like kind of a symbolism also because both of them are obviously gonna fall actually Lee Miho is already falling head over heels for her but Chimu Bin and Lee Miho are obviously gonna fight over her and she was in the middle so it was just like so cute but yeah, I thought that was like pretty interesting though. I love like the dynamics of everything. Like, kudos to the writer and kudos to the director. That scene was totally on point. So, um, I love that scene. And my fifth favorite scene was when she found out that he was like the son of the family. I thought that scene was like touching and everything. Okay, so he came back and he's like, oh, how he, like they met was he's like, oh look up your window and she looked up the window looked up the window and she saw the dream catcher and she's like huh and then he's like oh turn behind you and then she turned behind her and he was dead she's like what are you doing here are you like stalking me all the way to my house oh my goodness but no he wasn't so he's like um you think about it use your head and your brains and then she thought about it and she's like oh my goodness are you the second son of this house and he said yes and she kind of walked away and he's like um could i have missed you ah! that was like the beginning when he said could i have volume for you or something like that but that was like really cool though oh and then um she kind of walked away and for those of you wondering like why the heck did she walk away like she should have stayed and maybe hugged him or something like that well i understand how she could have walked away because she never expected him like he's this rich guy that she fell in love with in america her dream and stuff and suddenly he comes to korea and he's the son of the group she hates so much and she's living a miserable life in a closed up place and she's like that's when she asked him do you know that where i've been living like that closed up place and he's like yeah i i knew all along and she felt kind of ashamed embarrassed that he has seen all this sad and pitiful pitiful aspects of her and i could totally relate with her on that which was kind of sad and then she walked away and that was also sad but it was also cute how they met but it was also sad then my next favorite is oh i prefer i prepared notes so i remember everything i want to talk about today um mm, uh, for me when said ever been here before all right so my next favorite scene is now kim will be in chat and song let's talk about them so i love how kim will be like um met her like when he met her again at the roof like the um star and he was like oh my goodness i meet her again and then he walked there and but he was kind of mean rude for like hitting her table because if a guy ever does that to me i think i'll i'd literally like throw the table on his face or something like dude i'm trying to sleep here but yeah i think it's really cute though and i thought it was really cute how he like treated her and then she fell and he held his hand her hand and she's like dude you tripped me on bubbles and he's like yeah i'm gonna trip you over and over again ah! get it he's gonna trip like she's gonna trip for him but obviously not but yeah that was just so cool though yeah um what next Ooh. um I think it was pretty interesting like once more we got to see like okay so that's one of my least favorite scenes Kintan and his brother when they met like when the dad like planned for them to meet 
at the company and then they met and his brother misunderstood him and he's like dude no matter what i do even when i go into something unknowingly you still like hate me for it and his brother was like yeah i still like because even not doing anything like your existence is just kind of a trouble and stuff that was really sad though i felt so bad for him i'm like dude he didn't do anything stop hating him so much that was like so sad but i think the brother and the teacher girl i don't know her name though they're so cute together i can't wait to see like what's gonna happen between them i think they're cute and my second least favorite scene was when he was like being bullying that kid like dude oh my goodness bullies <sighs> when he beat that guy up but it reminded me of boys over flowers and f4 and how like when the f4 is like dealing with kids like the misfits kind of no one in the school intervenes and everyone in the school also hates that guy which kind of happened we saw in this one because when he was beating the guy like everyone just stayed off it and i thought it was really funny because in boys over flowers lee min ho and his crew never put their own hand into like the bullying they just made like guys do it for them but in this case they personally like he personally did the bullying which was kind of different too from boys over flowers and what else did i want to talk about okay i also thought it was like pretty interesting how chat and song brought out the soft side of him because it was so obvious when he was fighting with like the misfit guy like the guy whose parents are also poor that he always bullies and the guy fought back that he wanted to like literally kill the dude but when he saw chat in song he immediately like took a step back and said oh okay i'm not gonna do this to you right now and he just like put his feet on the guy's shoulder and kind of like matched it and then walked away i thought that was like pretty interesting though and i love the dynamics of like the hate between kim tan and kim Mubin. how like he came into he walked into like where kim tan was and he's like oh you need to leave or i'm gonna because you're an illegitimate child and etc and etc i also didn't like that scene that was one of my least favorite scenes i didn't like that at all Another of my least favorite scenes, and also one of my favorite scenes, was when Chat and Song was eating with Lim Min Ho, and then Choi Young Do had to come and spoil it by sitting down and like looking at Chat and Song and stuff and being the jack that he is right now. And Lim Min Ho was like, "Oh, can you leave us and stuff?" And he didn't want to leave. And then Lim Min Ho just <laughs> threw his fuck. Ah! It was like the coolest stuff ever. But yeah, he's like, "Okay." Let's all sit down and like watch and see what happens. But that was like so cool now. Ah! Yeah, I give you thumbs up, leave me the whole thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Is this the right one? And no 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 to Cho Young do No 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 no. Um so yeah. I thought that was pretty cool though. Now let's go to Bona and Chan Young. Did anyone else feel like they didn't give them enough scenes today? Yeah, I felt that way. The cute, annoying slash annoying couple. We didn't get enough of them today. Which was kind of funny because she was today. It was about her and Lee Min Ho, like Bona and Lee Min Ho, and how she felt Lee Min Ho was still like on her and he hadn't gotten over her and Lee Min Ho felt the same way he's like oh when he went to meet Chan Young he's like oh I see she hasn't gotten over me <laughs> I'm like y'all are so full of yourselves though <laughs> but yeah I think they're really cute though I can't ever imagine Lee Min Ho having gone out with someone like that but yeah apparently they did but that'd be pretty interesting to watch that that dynamic as much as Boys Over Flowers is my best drama ever it was not that realistic but hers is realistic in that when she came to the school yeah there were people dropping off like kids like the servants or maids or whatever they called or chauffeurs dropping up like kids and putting their bags on for them but it wasn't like so unrealistic like um boys over flowers where leaving home was coming down from an helicopter that was really cool though ah! 
yeah, that was really cool. Um, coming down from a helicopter, oh, there were like horses and chariots and oh, okay, that was totally unrealistic, but I totally loved it. I totally loved the unrealisticness, realism. I think. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me, I'm really sick. It was, it was really cool though. I thought that was like pretty interesting. So I saw the similarity between Boys Over Flowers and that. And when she came, I was expecting them to sing Almost Paradise. <laughs> and remember, like when Lee Min Ho came and everyone was like rushing to meet him, and it just brought back memories of like what's it called? Boys over flowers, and when like F four comes into the school, and all the girls and everyone rushes to meet them, rushes to meet them, and I was also waiting for them to start singing "Almost Paradise." My voice sucks. I have a bad voice right now. Don't say my voice sucks, even though my voice sucks. Yeah. Um. Shh, don't tell anybody I told you. So um, I thought that was pretty cool though. Um. What else? What else? What else? Let's see. Ever been here before? Went here. Didn't mind seeing him. Fully can't get over him. The sleeping room. All right. Another cute scene was when she just finished like hanging the bed sheets, I believe. And Lee Min Ho came in, and then he saw her, and she was kind of complaining about her life. And then she slept, and he came in, he saw her, and she's like, "Oh, just five more seconds." That was so sad. I felt so sad for her. She. All she does is walk, 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 walk. And that was like so sad. Gumjan didn't ever even walk that much. I don't know why she felt so miserable about her life, but I still love my soul flowers. <laughs> and then um, he came and he brought the dream catcher and he kept it there for her. And I thought that was like the cutest thing ever. I was like, oh, baby, who just proposed to me already? Yes. All right. Um, so I thought that was like really cute though and then when I thought another scene that was like super cute was when um, Lee Min Ho met Kim Hen Yo and I was I found it really interesting that they were friends though and their relationship or whatever was like pretty cool how they were talking and stuff I'm like oh at least not everyone in the school hates him so that was good and also, I love that um, Choi Young Dog's friend is also Lee Min Ho's friend. And even though he's in between both of them, he's not choosing to like just stick to Choi Young Dog and not to t talk to Kim Tan. And when he met Kim Tan again, he wanted to like hug him. And I think his name is Myung Soo or so. And he wanted to like hug him, but he wasn't sure how Lee Min Ho would accept that. And that was just so cute, though. I totally love his character. He's like so awesome. And I love how. He was trying to find out about like Park Shin Hye's like past and family, and I thought it was pretty interesting when Park Shin Hye first came to the class and they were asking her like what she from and all that and all that. And Lee Min Ho quickly diverted the attention of what do her parents do, and Lee Min Ho diverted the attention from her to him. And I thought like, ah, that's just so cute. He's so awesome. How can you not love him? But yeah, that was just awesome though. I love that scene. That's one of my favorite scenes. And another scene that I also loved was when he came and he said, oh, she's new money. And he's like, just stick to me and be my shadow. But I didn't like him using the word shadow. No, 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 no. Lee Min Ho. That was a no, no. I didn't like that word shadow. But yeah, every other thing was like totally on point. And I have to give him props for like totally helping her and stuff and being there for her because he obviously loves her. But totally, Hairs this week was like on point. I loved it. I loved how I was able to pick the similarities that they've been talking about. And I can't wait to see like the backstories of certain people. Like I said, Buna, I want to really know what's going on with the girl because something's actually, something has to be going on and I want to know what it is. And I can't wait to see how the story progresses. And for those of you who are saying like, it's too early for Lee Ho to love her this much. Do you know who the writer is? Have you watched A Gentleman's Dignity? Like Jang Dong-gyun, Jang dong Kuk, Jang dong the main character, fell in love with Kim Hen-yo, Kim Hen-yo, 
like I believe not like love love but he got attracted to her from the first episode like during the whole pulling of the string from her dress stuff and he got so interested in her and so that's something I kind of uh, is not something that I didn't expect I kind of expected from the writer because that's kind of a little bit of how I know her from Secret Garden and all that and all that and I also like that she put something like is it spiritual i'll call it in terms of the dream catcher stuff because it's like you whoever noticed in like i think it was episode one or two when Lee Min Ho's head touched the dream catcher stuff that was when the whole love story stuff started between them and secret garden there was also the secret garden thing there's always something like supernatural with her and i think like that's cute though i like when she like brings that to her stories that's like really cute that's something different so i really can't wait to see where she goes with all this it was to this episode i loved it i loved seeing so much of Lee Min Ho and Pak Shin Hae Lee Min Ho and Pak Shin Hae and i thought it was really cute when they were in the cellar together and he's like oh can i see you and she's like oh um yeah where are you and he just jumped out and she was so scared and she's like is this the first time you've done this and he's like obviously not <laughs> that's like so awesome it reminded me of gentleman's dignity because the main lead there too was so upfront and totally sincere and we see the same thing from Lee Min Ho and this he's like so upfront and totally sincere and in gentleman's dignity also it's like the main guy loved her much first before she loved him more but in this one too it's like Lee Ho loves her so much more now and all that and all that and all that so I think that's really cute I can't wait to see where they go with it I totally love the episode and I love the ending like when he called when Kim Woo Bin thought he was having a cool time with chatting song and so he just received a call from Lee Mi Ho and like Lee Mi Ho was like dude what you doing my girl right now I'm gonna beat you up obviously that's not what happened i'm just exaggerating but yeah i thought that was really cute though when he came and he called kim Bean and they were just talking on the phone and chan song was there and that was like really cute so i'm really excited for next week's episode seven and eight ah! it's gonna be like so dope though so yeah i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to hairs hairs is has not let me down by any means right now and i hope it hasn't let you down please give it a chance it's actually nice drama so far and i miss vicky time comments vicky please do something about it uh maybe we should like i should do like a live session where we all watch hairs together and, like type comments on youtube maybe that'll make up time comments because i really love time comments though but anyway thank you drama fever for showing it right now and i hope vicky gets their license soon so for me to you all once more i love you all and i'm sorry that today was just me fangirling and fangirling and fangirling and fangirling but yeah i hope you enjoyed today's session and stay tuned for more videos and reactions from me and if there's anything i didn't touch today that you want me to touch regarding heads because i feel i may not have touched a lot please tell me and i'll make another video and post it especially for you so from me to you all Serengay. Ciao.